And because Kaizen means continuous improvement, that's our company goal and our goal for your sales department and dealership. Now, if you want to improve your sales skills, learn how to use psychology to close more car deals and receive unbiased dealership vendor product and service reviews, make sure you subscribe and then turn on the bell so you never miss out on learning anything new. So when I walk back in, like I said, if you want to make sure that you've got something else to say, just kind of like I did there, you would want to go ahead and fold the paper over. Now they're going to be dying if it's that long of a monologue, <laughs> so I would have saved that prior to um, I would have saved that prior to coming in with the figures. Uh, I would have done that while my manager was appraising the property. Right. Okay. Um, because that's a long time to listen. But you can say something like, hey, look, you know what? So I'd walk back in. Mm -hmm. I'd, go, I'd, I'd walk in, I'd say something like, hey, Dan, i got a tremendous opportunity for you here. Before I run through the figures, I want to ask probably one of the most important questions that I think I've asked, but maybe assume. And that question is this. You do love the car, don't you? Oh, yeah, I like that. All right, good. Because there's no such thing as a good deal on a car you don't really love. Am I right? Right, absolutely. Right. So let me go through your opportunity with so here's the opportunity. So you're looking at the 2020 Ford uh, Explorer Platinum Edition. Mm -hmm. Now the original list was just right at 54, just a little bit 50 under 54.5. Right. Now we discounted that vehicle, as we discussed, it's been pre-discounted, $5,000. Bringing it to 49.445. Now we've got a fair market value of your vehicle at $13,000. They want to buy it for that. Leaving us a difference here of 36.445. Now, the only thing we have to do is collect the tax license, and then we'd, of course, take the payoff. Now, when we generated these payments, we used the payoff and we included the tax and license, but we also went ahead and used a suggested cash investment of $2,000. Now, we've come up with three different type of payment options for you. The first one is a 48-month term that gives you uh, the smallest amount of interest charges and helps you realize equity quickest, and that right. payment's going to run you right there. And then you've got the other end of the spectrum, which is a little lower payment at 60 months, and you can see where the payments are gonna run you in there. Right. And then lastly, we've got kind of the best of both worlds, the 54 month payment, it's right in between those. So my manager's prepared all of these for you. Which of these three works best for your situation? And then I guess the only other question is, do we want a coffee or Pepsi while we finish up the rest of the paperwork? Well, I, I understand what you're saying about the market price on, on the car you're selling me. I, I do appreciate that and understand okay. that. I, I don't understand why I looked this up on Kelly Blue Book, and it tells me that my Escalade should be worth like fifteen to seventeen thousand. Okay. And you're lowballing me here at thirteen. Okay. Well, hey, you know what? I appreciate that you want to get more for your car. I mean, if I'm sitting in your spot, I probably want to get more for my car as well. So, you know, you looked at the the Kelly Blue Book, and that's a smart thing to do. I mean, it's a third party publication. I would do that. There's Edmonds out there. That's another one of them. Black Book. I mean, there's three or four publications out there to help you with some validations. However, they can't even agree on what the price of a vehicle is. It really comes down to, to three main things. So, are you familiar with the Odessa, the Mannheim Auto Auction? No. Okay, well, they're the two of the largest auto auctions in the United States of America. So, we go to them sometimes in person, but a lot of times now we just go to them online. We've got access to their online auction sites right there in our manager's office. So, what they do when they look at a vehicle like yours is they just go out and see what they could buy a vehicle like yours from at the auto auction. Makes sense, right? Right. So, what they do to look at those three things, the three things they look at is this. So, the first thing they do is they go into that auction website portal, they go in the back end tool where the dealers can go. And the first thing they put is a 17 digit vehicle identification number. And that way they're assured they've got the correct year, make, model, but probably most importantly, trim package. Like for your instant, this one you're looking at is a platinum package. They've also got the XLT as well. So, that makes sure they've got the exact vehicle. Now, the second thing they do is they enter in the exact miles. Because even a small fluctuation of miles, one way or another, like 500 to 1,000 miles, can make a difference in the price. Okay. Now, lastly, is condition. Now, when we were talking earlier, when we were going around your vehicle, and I asked you to rank it at a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being that it was showing condition, like the nubs are still on the wheel, and 1 that it's complete junk, you rated it a 7. Right. And that's what we ranked it at, too. So, that was the third thing we did. So after we entered all these into the computer, what it showed us was several vehicles like yours we could buy from the auto auction with a seven rating. And the price it gave us for a vehicle like that was right at $12,500, which is $500 less than we're offering for yours. So unless I'm missing something, this is the fair market for your vehicle. 
Dan, from everything you told me, it really seems like this is the perfect vehicle for you and your family. You know what? What do you say we go ahead and put all the shopping behind you and get you out of here? That way you can start enjoying the vehicle as opposed to running around shopping all day. Were you going to go ahead and title that vehicle in your name first, or are you going to put your wife on, on the title first? Both of them. Okay, you're both going to go on there? Okay. Well, I just need you to okay it right here, and we'll go ahead and get everything cleaned up. And uh, I guess you want to water Pepsi or coffee? We'll let's finish up the rest of the table. Water. Okay. Go ahead and okay that there for me. All right, so... If you'd objected again, so depending on how you worded your I want it, so because of the way you told me that you wanted, um, because of the way you bubbled up the trade to me, right. it felt like that one that I already showed you was the best one to do, okay? Right. Because what you told me was that you looked at a publication. Right. Now, another one I could have done was this. I could have, you said that you went ahead and looked at the figures on it, that you looked at Kelly Blue Book, and you wanted to know why I was lowballing you, you showed right. it for 12 to seventeen thousand dollars. So what I could have said to you was, "Hey, look, I get it. I mean, obviously you're going to go ahead and use those types of services to see what the value of a vehicle is." My managers did the same types of things as well, and they actually also used some different auction reports as well to see in real time what they were going for. Right. So based on the on my management team's research, the fair market for your vehicle is actually thirteen thousand dollars. Now you're asking for another what? Anywhere from two to four thousand dollars more for that. And that could be kind of problematic based on my management team's research. So what you're asking for is, we'll say another $4,000 for that vehicle, or another basically about 30% more for that vehicle. So that could be problematic based on my management team's research. I mean, just imagine this. Just imagine you've done quite a bit of research on a truck you want to buy, right. and you found that a fair price was right at about $49,000. And then all of a sudden the dealer they went ahead and they wanted to charge you another 30% or another $15,000 for that vehicle. I mean, would you buy the vehicle for, say, what, $55,000 when you know the fair market value should be closer to $49,500? No way. So, and that's kind of the same thing I'm going to run into with my management team, Dan. I mean, asking them to pay you another 30% more than the fair market value for their trade, it's just going to be very difficult. So, unless I'm missing something, this is the fair market for your vehicle. I know it's a little bit more money you want to spend, but that's why you ought to get it. The reason it's a little bit more money you want to spend is because it's got everything you and your wife want on this vehicle. It's got all the equipment you guys love. Now, because of that, it's going to do several things for you. The first thing it's going to do is make it to where you love the car during the whole ownership of the, of the vehicle. I mean, who doesn't want that? But the fact that you love it means you'll probably keep it longer. Now, when you keep anything longer, you know what happens when you take the cost of something spread out over time, right? right. It goes down. So actually you'll be paying less for the vehicle because you'll keep it longer and you'll spread out the cost over a longer period of time. Plus, if you do go to sell it or when you do go to sell it, trade it, it's going to be worth more because it's got all the good equipment. Let's go ahead and get this shopping behind you and get you out of here so we can get you to the lake and get you fishing today. Did you want a Pepsi or a water while we go ahead and finish up the rest of the paper? You can get a water. Okay. Yeah. It looks okay.